Hey guys, it's Mike from the Geek Pub. And on this episode, we're gonna build this badass one U server. Now this video is not about building the biggest, the baddest, and the most redundant server we can build. Rather, this video is going to be about building the biggest and baddest server that we can cram into a 1U case that's only 19 inches wide by 12 inches deep. It won't come without its challenges, but in the end, it's going to be worth the struggle and awesome. Now I plan to use this box as a home network server running VMware ESX, meaning I will have multiple virtual servers running on it all at once. This server will actually be the second server in a pair of servers forming a redundant cluster. These two servers both connect via iSCSI to a Synology RS2416 Plus to share a VMS storage volume. This contains the operating systems. This is awesome because it means if one server fails, the other one immediately takes over. On this server cluster, I have several machines running. I have a Windows 10 VM running HomeSeer, which is a pretty powerful home automation package for controlling lighting and other aspects of the home. I also have an Ubuntu VM server running Plex, which is an incredibly powerful home media server. Attached to Plex is a 10 terabyte volume for storing movies, TV shows, and music, as well as family home videos and photos. In addition, I have several lab boxes running, including a Windows 2016 server, Observium for network monitoring, and some other boxes. I chose the Intel Core i7-6700K for this server build. It's a quad-core 4 GHz processor designed for an LGA 1151 socket that can be reliably overclocked to as high as 5 GHz. Now this is of course a Skylake processor, and some of you are wondering, why didn't I choose the new 7700 KB Lake processor? And that's absolutely a fair question. I chose the Skylake because it's the second server in a cluster and I wanted the new machine to be identical to the original. It just makes things in VMware ESX simpler. However, if you decide to build this box, I would definitely recommend that you step up to the 7700K. It will work in the same motherboard we chose and it costs only a few dollars more. Now if you don't need this kind of horsepower in your server, you could scale this back to a Core i5 or a Core i3 and save some serious money. To install the CPU, simply line up the triangle with the markings on the socket, set it in place, and close the lock on the CPU socket. This build has one interesting challenge that you won't face on most builds. The CPU cooler has to be less than one inch tall and still be able to adequately cool a 91 watt CPU. This is no easy task and I went through several different CPU coolers before I found one that could actually handle the job reliably. The cooler I landed on that passed all of my stress tests with flying colors is the K199 Active Blower from Dynatron. This cooler is barely 7 eighths of an inch tall and it puts out an amazing amount of air. And it has a feature that is not only nice to have, but necessary for a 1U server build. The top of the cooler is sealed and the cooler has a side ejection port for exhausting hot air. This is required because when the cover is placed on the case, there will be less than an eighth inch gap between the top of the cooler and the bottom of the lid. To install the CPU cooler, add the backplate rails to the bottom of the motherboard. They connect with the included double-sided tape. Flip the motherboard and then screw down the cooler after placing it on top of the CPU. The K199 comes with thermal paste already applied, but you can replace it with better paste if you desire. Orient the ejection vent on the cooler towards the left side exhaust vents on the case. This will provide the most efficient airflow pattern resulting in the most optimal cooling at the lowest RPM. Because this is an ESX server build and it will be running many virtual machines, RAM is something that will be important and lots of it. For this build, I chose to use 32 gigabyte of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 at 2666 megahertz. This is the max amount of RAM that this motherboard will support and the fastest. Installing the RAM is very simple. Pull back the tabs on the DIMM slots, align the notch on the bottom of the DIMM with the notch on the slots, and then simply press firmly into place at both ends until the levers click back into place on their own. The case I chose is a 19 inch 1U rack mount case from iStore USA. This case is a bare bones and doesn't include a power supply or even a fan. One of the nice things about this case is that the rack mounting ears can be placed on either end of the chassis, allowing for the motherboard ports to be at the front or the back of the rack, depending on your preference. I'm going to mount the case with the ports towards the front. The motherboard I chose is a Mini ITX ASUS Z170 Pro Gaming motherboard. I chose this board not because any of the gaming specs, but because it allows overclocking and is 99% compatible with VMware ESX 6.5. 
I say 99% because this board, like most non-server boards, will not pass IPMI data to ESX, meaning that VMware won't be able to read the temperature sensors. In my case, this is fine because the motherboard BIOS will handle the cooling and fan speeds independently of ESX, and I'll have plenty of other devices that I can read temperature sensors just in my network closet. Now, just to be clear, you can get many ITX motherboards that support IPMI, but I am not aware of any that are supported by ESX and also support a Skylake or Kaby Lake processor, overclocking, or independent chassis fan controllers. And by the way, this board supports Aura RGB lighting, which means your server will glow in all of the open vents, if you're into that sort of thing. Installing this motherboard into the iStar case represents a few challenges. Let's start off with the fact that the IO shield is about 3 eighths of an inch too tall. This is a pretty common problem with 1U cases, and good news, it's not too hard to solve for. Mark the IO shield with a pencil, and using a pair of aircraft snips, remove the top portion of the shield, and then place it into the IO shield slot on the motherboard. The second challenge you may face with the iStar case is that the motherboard standoffs on the bottom of the case are just not quite tall enough to lift the motherboard to the proper height, allowing it to line with the back of the case and keep the CPU backer plates from making contact with the bottom of the case. I solved this problem by using some 3M Super 77 spray adhesive to add two small nickel washers between the case and the motherboard on all four posts. This added the necessary height to the standoffs and everything fit perfectly in place. Follow this up by installing the four post screws and snugging them up. The power supply I chose is a 1U variant from Apevia. It's a relatively small 250 watt power supply, but it is more than enough to power our motherboard, CPU, SSD hard drive, and a 4-port network interface card. The power supply just slides into place and is attached by four screws on the back of the chassis. Follow that up by plugging the power supply leads into the motherboard. Now is also a great time to plug in each of the connectors from the case for the power, the reset buttons, and along with the power and activity LEDs into the appropriate pins on the motherboard. Also, attach the USB block connector for the case front USB ports. I chose to install two fans in the case. Both are 40 by 40 millimeter brushless fans. The fans are installed by screwing them into the front of the case with the eight provided screws. You can position the fans to either exhaust air from the case or intake air. Be sure you orient them in the correct direction based on how and where you're mounting your server in the rack. I will be mounting mine with the fans in the intake position. One fan will be connected directly to the power supply and run continuously at full speed. The other fan will connect to the chassis fan connector on the motherboard, where its speed will be determined by the cooling needs of the system. The iStar 1U server case supports the mounting of two hard drives. However, our internal storage will only be used for holding the operating system and some installation images for our virtual machine installs. This is because all of our virtual machines will be booting and operating from a shared VMS volume on a Synology Rackstation 2416 Plus over iSCSI. I honestly could have skipped the hard drive completely and just booted my server from a USB stick, but I wanted to provide for future functionality should I ever use these for any other purpose and decide not to use network attached storage. The drive I chose is a Samsung Evo 850 SSD in the 500 gigabyte variant. Again, a complete overkill for me, but likely perfect for most of you who won't have network storage. The iStar 1U case does allow for two drives, meaning you could mirror two drives for better performance and redundancy. To install the drive, simply screw it to the backer plate with the four provided 2.5 inch drive mounting screws, and then attach the backer plate to the bottom of the case. Attach the SATA power connector from the power supply. Attach the SATA connector to the hard drive and then to the SATA 1 port on the motherboard. Since this server is going to not only get its storage from iSCSI, but also be responsible for streaming movies and media throughout the house, robust network connectivity on this box is of vital importance. For that reason, I selected the Intel Pro 1000 VT Quad Port Network Card. This card is 100% compatible with VMware ESX and performs exceptionally well for the price. Since this card mounts sideways at a 90 degree angle from the motherboard, a PCIe riser cable will be required to mount it. First, plug the riser cable into the motherboard and then plug the card into the other end. Orient the cable so that it will not interfere with other components and then screw the card into the case card slot with the provided screws. I installed the server in a 1U rack slot above my existing server. It just slides into place and is secured by four rack screws. That's really all there is to it. I connected it to my gigabit network switches, loaded VMware ESX, and now I have two servers in a VMware cluster. 
I honestly couldn't be more happy with this pair of servers. Anytime I build a box, I always stress test it before putting it into daily use. In this case, I use Prime95 to calculate prime numbers for 24 hours straight, all while keeping the CPU at 100% utilization. The CPU never thermal throttled, meaning everything is working as designed and we don't have any cooling deficiencies in this build. The CPU cooler and case fans did run at 100% during the entire time, which can be quite noisy. So if you plan to run your bad one u server at near maximum load, placing it in a closet away from the main part of your house might be a good idea. That being said, under normal loads, the server is extremely quiet and barely noticeable due to the fans running at near idle speeds. Well, hey guys, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it, please do me a favor and like this video and subscribe to my channel. And by all means, share it with your friends. And hey, if you hated it, go ahead and hit that dislike button and comment below to tell me why. See you in the next video.